Hi, Joanne. Hi. I, I'm doing this on my cell phone, so I'm a little uncertain as to how this works. Okay. There well, you are. I can, I can okay. see you. Okay. It turns out Gary and I both have board meetings at the same time on when, on the second Wednesday of the month. Oh, gosh. So, <laughs> so this is going to be a perennial problem, but we worked today to get my cell phone onto Zoom, so I think I'm okay. Yeah, you, I can see you really well. It, it, okay. I agree. It's a really clear picture, which it isn't always when you have somebody come in by phone. Okay, so now you're coming up one, one at a time. How do I get you both? You want to be on, um, you probably want to be on gallery view. The, but that's the one limitation to being on the phone is that I think you can only see the uh, speaker. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see about, it says participants. Let me see that if I can, no, nope. Oh, no. There we go. Okay. And then it says there's more. So let's see what more says. Chat? Nope. Nope. Okay. All right. We'll just, I'll, we'll, we'll deal with it. Well, you'll see who's ever speaking. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Susan. Hi, Joanne. <laughs> Here comes oh. Janice. Do, do you see me all the time? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Right now you're a quarter of the screen. <laughs> There's Janice. Hi, Janice. Hi, Janice. Hi. Hey. Hi, Janice. I'm on my cell phone, so I'm only able to see who's speaking. And here comes Susan. Gee. <laughs> oh, we're all here. Hello? Hi, Susan. Hi. Hi. Hi, Susan. I see. I see a telephone in a green circle. Yep, that's, yes, that's, that's me. Okay. Yep. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, well, we're we're all here. So shall we open the meeting at five seventeen? Yes, let's do that. Okay. Um, I'll just remind us all that we need to. I've set my alarm <laughs> for five for. Um, 640 and um, anyway, I, I don't know, I can't see myself very well, but anyway, um, cause we need to be, there's a, we can, the town can only schedule one Zoom meeting at a time on the one account. So we have to be finished so the ZBA can start. Um, so yes. Um, this is Susan Millinger. You know, if this happens again, I would be happy to host if that's possible. It's yeah, not we possible. Can, yeah, not for a town meeting. We have yeah. to be on the town uh -huh. site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is another workaround, which is that Becky would, um, there's the town administrator has her own um, Zoom account and she could set us up, except that today, um, today she had the day off and it didn't seem right that she would because if she does it she has to actually start the meeting yeah. and stay on which you know so yeah so we'll just well i'm glad to know that there's another option yeah yeah um so shall we just move right along yep okay um do you want me to just do the agenda joanne would that be easier yes please Okay. Um, okay, so we have the September 9, 2020 meeting minutes. Um, uh, is there a, a motion to approve? I so move. I, move. We oh. I second. Okay, is there any discussion? Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, let's have a roll call vote. Uh, Joanne Bernhardt. Aye. Aye. Jo Janice Gray. Aye. Susan Gomberg. Aye. Susan Millinger. Aye. And Linda Avis got aye. I have a point of order. Mm -hmm. Aren't we supposed to begin the meeting by identifying oh. the folks? By what? By the statement? 
by saying who we are, who's present, which we kind of just did. Yeah, we this did. This is Anna speaking, by the way, also not following the, the procedures. <laughs> I'm not identifying myself. Yeah. Audibly, so. I, I, well, we can say that there are five of us and we just all stated who we are. Okay. <laughs> Um, reminding me. Uh, all right, so next we have foot clinic update and the foot it proposal. Susan Gomberg. Um, I, I have nothing special. I have one little bit to add in that I got a phone call from one uh, foot clinic member who when she tried to make an office appointment the person answering the phone at the foot uh, care office said that, oh, Shootsbury is back in the town hall having oh. regular clinics. Oh. So she called, so she sent me a text asking, you know, is this true or is it a rumor? And of course I responded back, that's a crazy rumor, that they probably meant Wendell or something like that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That was only one person. So, okay. um, so the foot its proposal is to have the foot clinic in the church um, it is free. Um, I, I'm not too excited about that for the lack of handicap service if we're a town meeting. Um, and also if we're not in the town hall because of COVID concerns, how are, uh, would we be concerned about uh, the, the, the cleanliness of the church regarding COVID? Yeah, yeah. Those are my concerns. Thank you. I can tell you that I asked Becky um, about the um, appropriateness of holding a town. I, I'll say I have the same concerns as Susan Gomberg, and though I, the one other one was asking if it, if it was even appropriate. And um, Becky said, uh, Becky Torrey's town administrator said that um, no, um, you know, that it's a, you know, to have, a, we, we, it would not be appropriate to have a town um, foot clinic held in the church. And she cited the main concern being that it's not handicap accessible, mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, town and church and all the other concerns, but we can take it off the table um, if everybody, unless anyone has a strong feeling otherwise that we would want to lobby to have it. Um, um, I will back up by saying that I did communicate with Vanessa Eastman at Foot Care by Nurses. She's our um, financial contact and let her know the arrangements that we've made um, through November. So they they know what we're doing, you know, what we've offered our our participants. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. I this is Joanne Bernhard. Um, I did ask uh, a contact in New Salem who is on the Council on Aging what they're doing, um, and she she said that they are offering the foot clinic in their church that the church holds very limited services on Sunday and the, um, the, I guess it's the basement where they, where they, the foot clinic is offered, which is where the bathrooms are and that that's clean, cleaned right after the service. And, but they only have a very limited number of participants and they got their board of health to certify it. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that the New Salem Council on Aging doesn't have space, so they they use town buildings for um, whatever they do. Um, so that that's just a report, yeah. a find from what New Salem is doing. And, and I, were, am I did I understand correctly that they were this is Linda um, that they were already set up in the church prior to COVID. Yes, I think they are. So that's, or were yeah, yeah 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 okay they they did not have anywhere near the number that we have mm -hmm. Susan or Janet oh, Susan Millinger um, 
I think for the reasons that have been cited, it's just not by Susan Gomberg and you, Linda, it's just not a good idea. Sorry. Yeah. No, I agree. This is Joanne Bernhardt. I agree. And yeah. Janice Ray reluctantly agrees. I, I think it's a nice offer, but yeah, it, it feels uncomfortable to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I too appreciate the offer, you know, of trying to think of a, a way and, um, but, um, um, this is Susan Gomberg. Um, so do you want me to communicate with Chris, um, Linda? I know you replied to him at one point. Um, and can we lay it all on Becky that it's, you know, not appropriate <laughs> for her? I, I think, I think we would, I think we wouldn't want to do that. I think we could just say that, um, you know, we're, we have as a council um, with town administrator guidance, um decided that it makes the most you know that is most appropriate for our clinic to continue on a home visit basis okay and um i don't i don't i don't mean you know it's so um show how do you do you think it's a do you want to respond susan or um, um. Would you feel I, better? I could write something. I could write something up and then send it to you for clarification, like I did with the last foot clinic. Okay. Bulletin. Yeah. okay. Is that good with everybody? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Janice says I or yes or whatever. Should this we? Is. Should we? Um, <laughs> we? I think we should ought to maybe have a vote, like. Um, mm -hmm. So. Um, anyone want to make a motion? Mm. Well, Janice will make it, try to make a motion. I don't do this usually. Uh, I move that while we appreciate the offer of the community church to host a foot. Hang on a second. Sorry, <laughs> I, I'm I'm thinking this through as I talk. So okay, I figure this out. Start it at this far. But I do want to have the appreciate in there. Yeah. Um, that um that because of hand lack of handicap access and other concerns, uh, we decline the offer based on, and then there was something that Linda said about with and input from the town administrator. Right, with guidance. Guidance, okay, thank you. <laughs> so sort of a cog together motion. And I think health concerns, if I may add, this is Joanne, if I may add health concerns, Okay, can I, may I read that motion Please. to make sure everybody's okay with it? Please. Please. Motion that while we appreciate the offer of the community church for our foot clinic, because of the lack of handicap accessibility and health concerns, with the guidance of the town administrator, we have decided to decline the kind offer. Okay. So do we have a second? Joanne Bernhard, second. Okay, all right, so roll call vote, Joanne Bernhard. I excuse me. I'm sorry. Any further discussion? No. Okay. No. Jo okay. Joanne Bernhardt. Aye. Susan Millinger. Aye. Susan Gomberg. Aye. Joanne Janice Gray. Aye. And Linda Ava Scott. Aye. <coughs> okay. Thanks, everyone. Um. So now um, we have <laughs> the. EOEA grant slash annual report update from Joanne. Okay, this is Joanne Bernhardt. Um, since our last meeting, in the meantime, we actually have now the new form for the FY 2020 grant proposal, which differs from the old form slightly. Um, they they ask a lot of the same things, but some of them are asked differently. So um, one of the things that is different, um, they ask the number of volunteers, which we had, but they ask instead of how many volunteers doing what when, they ask for the weekly hours of volunteer service. So, 
what what I all of our little flow charts and things like that are now um, not necessary. You you just need to keep track of how many hours or how, what time you put into working for the Council on Aging. Uh, so in order to determine the number of weekly hours of volunteer service, I added up the total numbers of volunteer hours and divided by 52, uh, which comes out to be about seven hours a week of weekly volunteer service. Um, okay. Excuse me just a sec, Joanne. Yeah. Is that, okay, are we talking about a COVID year or are we talking about the year to come? We're talking about FY 2020. Because our figures are based on our, the COVID that we have now, our COVID year figures, right? Well, they're That's from July, July 2019 through June 30, 2020. Yeah. So last year, basically. Last year. So, so we, will have, we will have produced more hours once we're off COVID, is what I'm thinking. I'm right, thinking that's that's yeah know, we, we we just have to go with what we've got Susan yeah this is for last year yeah okay so we're last, this, last year's hours last fiscal year and we did okay. you all did that already we did yep. that yep mm -hmm. okay but but Janice had made a wonderful chart with all of the different <laughs> activities Thank you, Janice. <laughs> it does help us realize how many things go on that people participate in. Um, but basically, from now on, you just need to count the number of hours that you spend or the number, the amount of time that you spend working with the COA. Okay? I'm yes. Just, I'm going to just interrupt briefly to let everybody know that Marianne is um, here. She's muted, but she's here. Okay. Marianne Antonellis, Library Director. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. here. Sorry. Go ahead. In. Janice has a question. I just want to make sure I understand this. The seven hours a week is the total for everybody. Okay. Divided by 52. Yeah, I understand. It isn't for it isn't seven hours a month per person, which was something mm. for five or whatever that thing was before. Okay, so it's for everybody. Thanks. That's why I wanted to ask. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I'm wondering if we shall table this discussion till after we hear from Marianne. Um, yes, did you just, would you, thank you, Joanne, would you just um, remind us of the financials, just so we, we're, we've got that in our, in our minds before we, we embark upon. Okay, we have, we have um, 2,000 and some dollars left over from last year, which we do not have to return. Uh, and we will probably be receiving $6,000. So we should have a total of over $8,000 for uh, from July this year to June of 2021. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna zip over to um, FY21 budget fund and funding requests. So we just got our budget update, and um, and um, I sent everybody uh, forwarded to everybody Mary Ann's um, library fitness class proposal. Um, yeah, and I'm bringing it up. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, Hello. Okay. <laughs> um, should I share it? Yes. Um, Sure. Me, oh, I, so the host disabled participant screen sharing. You can, one participant can share at a time, so you may go ahead. Okay. Um, let me try again. This is Janet, uh, and I printed it out. So yeah, I no, it won't let me share it. That's let me see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, that's okay. I can just look at it. it out also. All right. Yeah. So yeah. everybody and I printed it. it. Okay. Oh. I'm looking at the wrong thing anyway. Um, this, <laughs> that wouldn't have been any good. Um, let's see. So what did I call it? Um, it's in an email, library fitness class proposal. Well, maybe I didn't make a, um, maybe, nope. I, maybe I just put it in an email. You did All just right. put it in an email. All right. Okay. So to you and Joanne. Yes, okay. I forwarded it to everybody. Susan, okay. do you have it? Yep. Okay. okay. All righty. There we go. Already, now I have it. Okay, so um, 
So Kathy's classes are covered through December. And so what that reflects is her classes from January through the end of June. And then Jay's classes. So Jay's, Jay's classes are going gangbusters. Even Kathy's classes are going gangbusters. But Jay's classes can have 28 participants. Um, and he doesn't care how many participants are in there. With Kathy's class, we're going to try not to have it go over 20. Um, that seems reasonable. Um, so, um, and Jay's class is meeting on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Um, and I would like to add an evening class. For, we've had people asking for evening classes. Um, and... And I, I don't want to add any more 9 a.m. classes to my week because I have three 9 a.m. classes in a week now. But I could add a, a couple of evening classes. Um, so um, although I do, I do think I'm going to bring back the 9 a.m. Wednesday. So even though I don't want to, I will. Um, <laughs> because I think that there's that people would appreciate having that class again. And of course, everything's going to be online for the foreseeable future. Um, so, um, so if you folks funded one of Jay's classes, that would free up my other resources and I could, um, you know, I could continue to offer these classes every Tuesday and Saturday year round instead of sort of limited series, which was originally planned. So if you did, so between the first week of November and June, there would be 33 classes on Saturdays. And that's what, how we started this partnership for strength training with Jay was the Saturday class. Um, and that's $1,800. And then Michelle Cunningham does a really nice Qigong class. Um, I don't know if I have it spelled right there. Um, I think it is, I think that is how you spell it. Um, and, um, and this is something she has wanted to do. And it seemed, and this would be an, an early evening. So we're talking like four o'clock. Um, so late afternoon. And we would do two eight week series, one in the fall and then one in the late winter, early spring. Um, and, um, and I was hoping that you would fund that. So the, those three classes would be a total of $4,225. And then I will continue with um, Jay's class on Tuesdays and then bring back a Wednesday morning yoga class um, and maybe an evening yoga class. Um, I'm going to apply for funding from another source too, and I do have some other grant funding. Um, and then I, so I'm looking at a couple of other new things, but I think people are um, enjoying the online fitness classes. We certainly have consistent participation. You know, um, in the past, there would be people who might not show up because the weather was lousy or they didn't feel like getting out of their house. And now all they have to do is really get out of bed. Um, <laughs> And um, so I think we're having really good participation. So you're all, all four of you are doing Kathy's class. Is that right? Four of us are. Yeah. And, and do you? And there are five of us here. Oh, who's the um, fifth person? Su Susan Gomberg. Oh, hi, Susan. Um, hi, Marianne. Okay. Um, you just look like a telephone. Um, <laughs> I am. So, okay. That's me. Okay. Um, so, so do the four of you like the online class? Uh, this is Joanne. I, yeah. I can't do it because of the timing. Um, oh, okay. Uh, the, the nine o'clock timing. I did it at 10 o'clock, but okay. the nine o'clock didn't work for me. Okay. All righty. Would nine o'clock on a different day work for you? It's the dog thing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Kathy really wanted to do it at nine o'clock. Yes, I uh, understand. So, okay. All I right. think more people did want to do it at nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Susan, is, does the online class work well for you? 
Well, it's not as good as in person, but it's okay. better than nothing. How about that? Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, okay. So, and you know, and of course, we would love to be having in person classes, but I, it's not safe right now. So, right. Um, so um, I mean, whoever imagined that we would be doing this? Certainly not me. So. Right. Um, yes, I went into this kicking and screaming. So, <laughs> um, but it's, but I think, I think people appreciate it and it's working out well. And, um, and, uh, I've, I've still have never participated in Kathy's class, but I think I see a little bit more of it now because I have it in the background, mm -hmm. either if I'm here or if I'm home and, um, and I have a, a greater appreciation for it. It's comforting to listen to. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, this is Linda, and I, I, I think it would be hard for a new person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we all have familiarity. Yes, with Kathy, and um, I. You but know, we do have new people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I can tell that. You know, she gives. Yeah. The special pre-class and after-class guide uh -huh. to new people, so yeah. that she does. You know, it it as because of who she is, it's right. possible to have new people. Right, um, and maybe I'll ask her if she is interested in doing like a beginner's class on another day, um, or even at ten a.m. for just a short period of time. Um, instead of her doing it on her own. Um, but I have, but I want, so I want to get the Wednesday morning yoga back up and running and I'd like to get an evening strength class and Michelle Cunningham's Qigong class and, um, and then maybe an evening yoga class up and running, um, before I plan, since I have all of those new things, I think that's yeah. enough. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do any more except for all of those things. Right. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So, so, um, questions, anyone? Does anyone have any questions of Marianne or thoughts about her proposal? So this is, go ahead, Janice. So this is Janice. So you're, you're requesting of the council of a on aging 4,225. Yes. Okay. I, I want to make sure because you talked yeah. about other stuff. Right. Uh, and I just All of the sure. other things would be funded either through my LSTA grant from the Board of Library Commissioners that is a, was a two-year grant. So we're starting year two of that grant now. Um, and then I'm going to apply. I had a grant from the New Salem Academy that um, has paid for a lot of the fitness classes and I'm going to apply yep. to them again. Um, and they like doing programming for adults um, and seniors. So I feel pretty confident that I'll get some money from them. Um, and then I'll, I usually can get some money from the cultural council. So I'll apply for yoga. So I'll apply for that. Um, and then we have friends of the library money. So pooling all of that, we can really stretch it to offer a lot of classes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to ask the finance committee. So I've never gotten programming money from the town. I get uh, the library budget pays for salaries, and then we get money to buy books and other circulating materials and office supplies. Um, and, um, and I, I said to the finance committee that I was going to ask them for some programming money. Um, when I went and gave my budget request last year, I said that this year I would be asking them for some programming money for next year. So I'm still planning to do that. Um, and, um, so that we can sort of start you know, and so I have this grant. Last year, I got a four thousand. I had four thousand from the board of library commissioners. For this coming year, I have three thousand five hundred, um, and I'm not going to ask them for three thousand. I was planning to ask them for two thousand, but I think considering the pandemic, I'll ask for a thousand and then build on it each year. Um, 
end because I think there's a lot of demand for um, for fitness programming and and we have high participation and it's good for people. Um, so and you know the whole town putting in a small amount of money, um, you know a thousand dollars compared to the town's six and a half million dollar budget. Um, so that's something I plan to do too, is to start building a sustained programming budget based on the success of this programming that we've all been doing together. Joanne, did you have a question? No, I was, uh, this is Joanne, I have a comment. Um, uh, I think this is really important to support. I, I know a number of people uh, before COVID were participating in all these classes. Um, and people were going to other places too, going to other yoga studios and other fitness places, which are also now closed. So this becomes the only place uh, for a lot of people to get some kind of exercise, yoga and fitness exercise, and, and possibly the Qigong, which is an interesting um, thought. Uh, so, so I really support this. Um, because I think it's really good for the town and particularly for the seniors in the town who don't have a lot of other options. And you know, even I think that some gyms are open, but now don't tell anyone, but I wouldn't have gone to a gym before COVID. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I certainly wouldn't go to a gym now. And, and we all make our own decisions about the risks that we are willing to take. But, um, but and, uh, you know, and I, and I remember, Susan, that you asked me a question before about, well, you know, you can do a yoga class, you can find a yoga class on YouTube any hour of the day, and you can, but I really think what works about these classes is it's us doing it together. So even though we're not all in a room together, we do see each other, we say hello, and it, it gives us that community connection too, sure. which is really yeah. important right now. Um, so, cause you know, cause I, I'm also not really seeing a whole lot of people. Um, you know, I used to see 30 people a day. Um, and now mostly I, you know, I email them and put something outside and I'm, I'm not seeing people in my work and I'm not seeing people in social interactions. So I can see how, when people come together for these classes that they're, you know, they're saying hello to each other. And, um, and, and while it's not the same, it's still a nice opportunity. And that's another reason why I kind of thought the Qigong could be good because it's, um, it's kind of like meditative and relaxing. Um, and so I thought it could just be a comforting uh, meditative activity for people, but still fall under that fitness um, umbrella. Any any other questions? Um, ups, you know, concerns. Susan Millinger. Just a suggestion, Marianne. I know we can't talk about it for the next few months, but I'm wondering if you've thought about having some stuff outdoors when the weather gets nice. Um, so, I know my sister-in-law in Maine. Oh, she has exercise classes even when it's still pretty cold outside. Um, Pre-COVID or since COVID? No, 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 no. Now. Now. So the Wendell Library did a series of Tai Chi outside. Um, mm -hmm. So here, here are, this is why I haven't done it so far. Um, so um, I still think we shouldn't be congregating. Um, and it was just recently that you know, congregations of more than 10 people was even allowed, mm -hmm. um, even outside. Um, but, and that's what, when, when that was, when that restriction was lifted, and I think it was made to be like 25 people, then Wendell did some Tai Chi outside. Tai Chi didn't require any equipment. Um, so, so now that we have online classes, one of my one of the thoughts that I have is that 
people are going to want both in the future. Um, that they're, you know, so if you, it, so, and you can't, it's not easy to do both. It's not easy to have an outdoor in-person class and also have it be an online class at the same time for the people who either aren't able or willing to come outdoors. Um, so that was one thought I had. The other thought I had was the weather. And there were some weeks when Wendell's class was canceled because of weather. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, um, and then, you know, but, but I'm not, and then the other thought I had was equipment. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, so would we, would people be, bring their own equipment or would be the library be responsible for hauling the equipment out and then hauling the equipment back in? Um, and, um, but, you know, so certainly we're heading into winter and I, I have made a decision that I'm not going to have ongoing regular <clears throat> in-person programming, you know, for now. But in the spring, we might be in a different place. Maybe there will be a vaccine and some people will have, you know, and it will have been administered and we could start with some outdoor programming, maybe some of the, the programming that requires less equipment um, or people would just bring their own equipment. Um, the, other, the other piece about equipment is then if, you, if people are using equipment, does it have, then have to be sanitized? Um, oh, I think, yeah. I think yeah. people have to bring their own equipment. I, I, okay. So yeah, I would like yeah. to just um, bring us back to where we are now um, okay. in terms of what Marianne has um, put forward as a request for funding. Right. Um, I'm just asking her whether she's thought about it for the future. Yeah, no, so, that's, that's fine. I just, you know, in the interest of um, time and the other mm -hmm. items we have on our agenda so that, you know, we can try to... Um, mm -hmm. okay. It's less than an hour. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Linda, uh, what's the procedure now? So it's really um, making a motion and um, seeing where we, where, we, where we stand. In other words, you know, if someone makes a motion and seconds it, we can, you know, discuss any further concerns or questions we might have and then take a vote. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Okay, Joanne, um, I move that we allocate $4,225 for the library uh, fitness programs as described by Mary Ann Antonella's director of the library in her request to the Council on Aging. Is there a second? Janice will second. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions? Is there any further discussion, concerns? Um, Susan Gumberg? Um, I, I think it's a really good thing to do, but this does lock up half of the money we have mm -hmm. until when next year? Yep, June, th July 1st. That, yeah. that, that's that's a, that was my question. Mm -hmm. um, this is Joanne. The, the only other thing that we're funding, able to fund right now is the foot clinic. So is there a, a, an estimate of how much we need for that? No, no, we don't have an estimate. Um, at least as far as I can tell, Susan Gomberg, do you have, I, it, we don't that's know. The last, Go ahead. Sorry, this is, Gombert, the last time we talked about it, I remember uh, calculating if we paid the full ninety dollars for our seventeen folks. I think it was fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. so but yeah. I guess for every two months, because people have it done every two. Yeah. Some, some, you know, some aren't doing it at all. Some are doing it every three months. That that would be the max. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't think we've come anywhere near that at all. No, no, we may spend more um we may spend more now because the per visit cost has returned to 90 and we did agree that we for those people who couldn't afford to even 
contribute at all and were putting off their foot care, that we would be able to assist them. Um, so um, what I, my observation is that Marianne's request is for, through June. I, I didn't hear the last word. That Marianne's request is for funding through June. So yes, yes it is a commitment um, of $4,225. However, it would, it, it, um, we, 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 we won't, we will be dispersing that over, over the months through the end of the fiscal year. Does that make sense to you all? Yes. Yes. You know, we've, we've com we're committing it. Um, it is half our money. Um, we, at this point, we don't have any, the other, only other piece of, that we may um, want to spend some money on is a newsletter. Um, or, Billinger? Yes, I would like to see us include a clause if we get the money that we're expecting from the state, because we don't have a state budget yet and we have a bad financial situation and we really don't know what could happen between now and June in terms of what we've been, what we're offered, what we're given in a grant, as a grant. Mm -hmm. I think it would be smart just to say that we're going to do this as long as we have the, as we get the monies we expect from the grant. So you would like to amend the motion to yes. say pending um, FY21 grant funding? Yes. No, I would. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, FY21 grant funding. Okay. All right. So, I'll admit to being a little anxious about committing half our funds. I, I, I admit to that um, just with uncertainty and. Um, Um, is um, Marianne, mm -hmm. is it possible that we can, um, it looks like uh, you're looking at funding from November through June for Jay, and when are you expecting to start the uh, Jigong with Michelle? Um, so that would be November and December. Okay. And then again in the spring. What if we did it? What if we did like if we did half? If we said we'll do, you know, so, so cut that dollar amount in half and cut the weeks in half. And then we'll plan that far out. And then when we get close to the end of it, we revisit it. And you, you know, at that point, you'll have your grant money and you'll have seen how the foot clinic went. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see how, you know, and maybe, maybe we won't have had great par participation in the Qigong and we'll decide not to do it again. Um, Qigong, Qigong, I can never... Um, um, I think it's, I don't know how you say it. She. Um, okay. She. She. Okay. She um, I get, I get, I, then I see the cue and I, um, so, um, so, so we could do it, you know, I mean, we don't have to say, um, you know, like I don't have to put on the flyer that this class is going until June. I, you know, um, we just say it's ongoing. Um, and so we could, we could do it that way. This is Janice and I'm more comfortable with that. And I think we did that last year, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we weren't sure what the state grant was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, any, anyone have any further questions? Um, perhaps we could, um, uh, with, uh, 
withdraw the motion made by Joanne and make a new motion. Joanne. Um. Can, can we can we actually figure out because the Kathy classes are January through June so uh, can we get a Marianne could you possibly do uh, an amended request that breaks it out into um, like fall winter and spring so so that because the Cutting it just exactly in half, I don't think is going to work. Okay. So what if I did, okay, so what if I did that? What if I made, so do you want me to do that math right now and you guys can talk about something else for two minutes? Sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll do that. Okay. okay. So we'll table this for now. <laughs> okay. While Marianne does some math. While okay. Marianne. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay with everyone? Sure. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right, so Joanne, do you have, do you want to go back to yes. the <laughs> OA grant slash annual report? Yes, meanwhile, back at the grant, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we talked about the volunteers. Uh, we, we have the list of what they call unduplicated elders, which means how many, how many bodies we're serving from the, from the uh, statistics that we did before. The thing that we don't have, and I don't know how we would find it, they are asking for how many people 75 years or older, how many people 59 years or younger, how many women, how many men, how many other, and I don't know what other means in this context, how many non-white and how many white. We don't track any of that. We can guess, nope. but we don't really track it. Right. And I think when jo Joanne and I talked, we felt like the 59 and younger bit was a mistake. It really is 59 to 674 um, and 75. It, it may be, though, though I, in, it, I'm, I'm rethinking it because the Council on Aging from the state goes from 60 and we go from 55. Okay, so, so 60, they haven't included 60 to 74 in that. No, no, that would be the number left in between but oh, okay. um okay. it's a little strange the whole the formulation is strange um i can email the person that i now have a contact for who is actually responsive and and query that um and also tell him that in fact we don't keep track of any of these numbers in this way and what are they thinking uh, <laughs> but yeah but yeah, I mean, uh, there's yeah really apply to us because we're so small and, um, you know, as compared but, to a large. But I would wonder how any, even a large uh, COA, you know, in a place, I mean, you know, Northampton, they have a, they have a building, they have staff, but I don't know that anyone is tracking the ages of people, you know, specifically, yeah. so. So it sounds invasive of privacy. Also, you know, asking gender. That's invasion of privacy, I would say. But. Yeah, so we're, yeah. we really, the only thing we can do is give, give um, the number of, um, we, we can't figure that out. We really can't. I mean, we don't know. And, and mm -hmm. how many people. We I can, mean, we can anecdotally go back and each tell how many, how many women and how many men we thought were in classes. Uh, we do yeah. have names for right. some classes we don't for all of them yep good i thought of a way that, and we can bring this up some other time of how we can capture that information about who's in the classes sort of um because we don't know who's duplicate and who's new mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but you can you can take a screenshot from your computer and you know include the check the, the list of participants that might be one way now in some cases there's two people sharing a zoom you know a couple but i was thinking about that mm -hmm. the the 
the other issue is, uh, as I think we talked about before, I think the, the statistics for the annual report go into the Mass Council on Aging an annual report that goes to the uh, EOEA, but it doesn't affect our grant. So there's a way in which this doesn't matter, to be blunt, um, and we can estimate, um, or I can actually go to the person who is responsive and say, you know, you're, you're asking things that people are not tracking that people don't know. And I don't see how, I, I, I think that the, the whole form needs to be revised, you know, and I can point out like five or six things on this form that I think are, are not logical. Um, not that they would like that, but you know, <laughs> I mean, for instance, they, they ask um, how many people we serve 59 or younger in one place and in another place they ask what services we provide to people under 60. Um, yeah. Again, which, which we don't know who's under 60. So right. the rest of it we have covered in, in terms of our statistics. Um, so of, of all the stuff that we did before and collecting, you know, who, how many people are in classes, how many service hours we have, how much money we have uh, from the town in kind from the town, um, how much cash we have. They don't ask where, how the money's spent. Um, and so the rest of it, we really have under control. So that's what I have to say. Thank you, Joanne. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um. So can I just say that for the Zoom classes, I have, so Zoom keeps a list of participants. Mm -hmm. um, so I can tell you who signed into each class. Um, and um, now, it doesn't matter if they live in Shutesbury or not. Um, <laughs> they uh, have asked that question. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we are I, talking about Shutesbury, but <laughs> right. Um, but but it's who comes to our programming. I'm sure the Amherst Council on Aging counts all the Shutesbury people who go to their programming. Yeah. Um, sure. But um, but I do. You know, I have a number and then there's, I can click on the list and see the names of everybody who was there. So, mm -hmm. um, so I can sort of say exactly who they are and then, um, and, you know, so if, so, so I could, and I'm actually, I'm sort of, well, I'm compiling all of that data, not, I'm, compiling numbers of classes and numbers of participants for my grant report for the LSTA grant for my interim report. Um, I'm not compiling ages or genders. Um, so you, so they want age and gender for your, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I mean, and we, of course, you know, we would just be assuming the genders. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, and then we would be guessing at ages. Um, if you wanted to put in something, you could kind of, I mean, we could, we could, and then the thing is too, it could be spouses using each other's accounts because at this point, but, but at least we could say it was 70% mm -hmm. female and 30% male. Mm -hmm. if yeah. That would be right. helpful data. And mm -hmm. what I could do is I could look at... Yeah. A sample they're, they're, just the ask, they're just asking for numbers now. They're not asking for percentages anymore. Okay. They did that last year. They're not okay. now. So it's like how okay. many women, how many men. Right. Um, right. And I, I don't think we know other or non-white and white. Um, and we don't I, have to, and we don't have to do that. I don't think. Okay. Do right. And again, we would just be making assumptions. You know, yes. Yeah. We're not going to yeah. do that. Right. Right. Um, what, what you could do is, uh, 
so we could ask for that data in a survey um, at some point in time. You know, um, we could we could do a survey, and it could be a survey that we're saying, you know, about um, you know user satisfaction and user user. You know, and we could ask the question, do you want outdoor in-person programming? Um, you know, and do you, you know, we could do a satisfaction survey and then we could also ask for demographic data, which people could choose to answer or not. I, I don't really think it matters that much, okay. frankly. Okay. I, yeah. I, I think if we could get an estimate of... Um, uh, probably just women and men. Yeah. Okay. So, and do you want that for last year or for this coming year? Uh, I ex going forward? I'm They're just, asking for last year. I don't think we okay. have it all for last year. Okay. I have to step away for a minute, so keep okay. going. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, um, yeah, I... I mean, I have I have numbers of people who were in the classes. Right. Um, right. But um, I, I'm thinking I sh actually should call this person and and talk a little bit about some of these things because right. it it is actually a violation of confidentiality, as as Susan Millinger suggested. Right. Um, and I don't, I don't think it really matters that much. I don't think it does either. And it's, it's interesting, like we are not asked that kind of demographic data at all um, for any library grant reporting. Um, mm -hmm. So, it, you know, like numbers, but we're not asked male, female, or ages. Um, right, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and I mean, the one thing is that, you know, occasionally we have people that are a little bit on the younger side, mm -hmm. uh, but really most of the people showing up at our programming are 55 or at least 50 and older. Mm -hmm. But I mean, even I'm going to be 55 this month. Even I, you? Even me. <laughs> whoa, um, Marianne, whoa. Yeah. I think... <laughs> I think I am. Anyway, it's hard mm -hmm. to keep track. Um, you know, it's a big number. So, um, so, and I'm, and I'm often the youngest people in a room around, the youngest person in the room mm -hmm. around here. So, mm -hmm. um, so. Okay. So well, I, perha okay. perhaps for next year, because we're doing the Zoom things and we right. have the list of emails we can keep a little closer track that way right um yeah susan gomberg certainly can for the foot clinic yeah we we yeah, i mean yeah. we we could for the foot clinic the med ride the community luncheon um all of those things uh <laughs> what else did we have the tech training we know those things right we, we don't know the uh fitness classes right right yeah um yeah yeah. What I could do is I could, um, you know, and you can do this, you can do it like once a month. You can look at a class once a month and look at the demographics of it mm -hmm. and then sort of do it once a month and then use those as averages. Nobody gives like counts every day. Um, so, mm -hmm. um, so, um, so you can do that. And so certainly we could do that. Like I could look at, you know, a, one yoga class a month with Kathy and see if there were any men. And like right now, I don't think there are. And oh, Fritz participates. Mm -hmm. um, but he uh, might be the, Frank oh, participates. Martha. Oh, husband. Martha's husband. That's right. Yep. So. Um, and um, Susan. Susan Rice's husband. Does he, he does Kathy's class? Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, I could check. Yeah. It's all, it's all anecdotal, right? Right. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Bert Fernandez sometimes. Yep. Okay. All right. Cause I mean, he definitely does the strength training. We have a lot of men who do the strength training. Um, <laughs> uh, 
So, um, but like here, I'm going to look at one of Kathy's class, Fritz. Um, uh, I don't even know who that is. Um, is it Frank? Uh, no, it's somebody, Tim Whalen. Um, and so that could be somebody's husband or mm -hmm. partner or, or mm -hmm. something. Because um, sometimes, but that was just one. I okay. can make another one. So let me suggest uh, for the sake of moving on, because we have to mm -hmm. stop at 640. Right. Um, Marianne, can you and I liaise on this? Yes. Yes, and I can see if I can get you some data. Okay, because I'm, okay. I'm the one who's collecting statistics at this point. Okay, okay. So, and I, so I have a grant report that's due tomorrow. Um, okay. I cannot talk to you until after I click submit on that. So, okay, okay about, about your numbers. But then, so, so I emailed all of you updated numbers or, or new numbers. And so what I did was I went through February. So... Mm -hmm. Um, should we talk about this? Yes. Okay. So I did strength training on Saturdays, November through February. It would be 17 classes for $935. And then I did the yoga on Thursdays for January, January and February. It would be eight classes, a total of $520. And then the key gong would be in November and December, eight classes, $800. It's a total of 1,855. And that gets us through February. Okay. What, okay. say again, 1,855. Okay. So the Qigong was 800 for the two months of classes? No, oh, 400. 400, 400. Yeah. okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. But I'm seeing the email and it says eight classes, 800. I, maybe that's a typo. Let me look. That's a typo. Um, okay, so never mind. Yeah, that's a typo. It's eight classes, 400. Sorry. Okay. So, so we have an amended request for $1,855 for three sets of classes going through February, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But isn't um, the, the how do we how do we that? well the the total the total is still eighteen fifty five because nine thirty five five twenty and four hundred mm -hmm. so nine and nine is eighteen oh. yeah That's it's okay. my note my handwritten notes are right my typed notes are wrong <laughs> so, okay okay not the first time I made a mistake right. it won't be the last. So, so Linda, yep. Linda, do we amend the motion? I'm you, not, can, uh, you can withdraw your original motion and make a new one. Make a new one. Okay. I, so I withdraw my, my, my previous motion. Okay. Somebody else, please. So I move we allocate $1,855 to... Um, fitness classes as proposed by Library Director Marianne Antonellis. This is Gomberg, I second it. Okay, anything, any further discussion? Okay, so none, none being offered. Um, roll call vote, Joanne Bernhardt? Uh, aye. Susan Millinger? Aye. Susan Gomberg? Aye. Janice Gray? Aye. And Linda Avis Scott, aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming. All right. Nice to visit with you. I hope you're all well. Thank okay. you. All right. Happy You're birthday up. in advance, Marianne. Thank you. Thank uh. you. Yeah. <laughs> I ordered myself an Instapot. Um, oh. <laughs> so I'm so excited. I did a lot of research. And um, so I'm going to be... Um, I, I cook a lot and I love cooking and I love a new gadget. So I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yes. Okay. All right. Take good care, everybody. Okay. Bye. 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 Okay. So it's 619. We have about 21, 22 or so minutes. Um, 
so we have, um, <clears throat> we still do have a funding request from Village Neighbors. I'm going to suggest that we table that for now. Mm. <laughs> um, because that is a, probably a larger discussion and, um, um, and so if you're okay with that. Absolutely. Did the other go through? Yes, as far yes, I put in the request. So as far as I know, it, it uh, yes, it was received by the accountant and um, sent off. And so we have, never, we have yeah. not received anything from them. We sent them a letter, um, and then we sent the check, and we haven't heard anything from them. Okay. So Janice is asking, what are we tabling? Did they send in a second request? Well, we're tabling the original request for an annual contribution. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, sorry. Right. Thank you for clarifying. Yep. Mm -hmm. So when I was leaving, I heard somebody say, oh, and so I came back in case that somebody meant to ask me something. No. <laughs> no okay, no, or, so, all righty. So <laughs> I'm just going to go because sometimes people do and then, you know, all right, I'm going to leave. Thank, I'm going to stop you. bothering you now. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Okay, so the next uh, item is workshop outside meeting reports. Um, and so that was the dementia friendly age and age friendly communities. Age friendly communities, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I would like to suggest that we, we put the age-friendly communities off to a time when we have more time to discuss it, because Janice needs to report what she got out of it as well as I did. Uh, well, okay, so hold on, this is Janice. This last age-friendly thing, I never got the link, so I did not attend. Yes, but didn't you go to something a while I went, ago? I went to one in December, and I gave yeah. a report back then. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I... You know, I don't remember what you reported. I guess I need to go back in the minutes and look because I think- I, I think I reported it. You did. <laughs> yes, you did. You gave us a thorough report. Now, it's also true that I reported the day after, okay, this is what happened. Just, um, the, the, our meeting in December was the day after the age-friendly commun community thing up in Greenfield that I went to. So I gave a, a report, a, a truncated report and then I forwarded to everybody stuff that they then sent to me and all the participants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that wasn't really a wrong written report from me. And I still have that stuff somewhere and I can send it out again. But I did not go to the one that happened last week because they didn't tell me about it even though I asked them to. Well, hmm. I would, <laughs> part of my report would be I'm not really sure how effective the person in charge is at leading meetings. Hmm. I just think it's a it's a it's a big question that I don't know if we want to get into today because we would need to get um, select board approval. Yeah. No. And buy in when that's you know that's a lot to ask. Right. Mm -hmm. It's we we need to have a further time you know a time <laughs> to really talk. Um, so uh, I've made a note to carry over to the next meeting, at which point both Joanne, I think it's, I'm not sure I, who, who's, no, I'm going next Wednesday. Um, and so am I. Yeah. And Joanne and I are both going to the um, Mass Housing um, Project Senior, and a special one about senior housing in rural communities um, mm -hmm. next oh, Wednesday. Good. Yeah, so we'll, mm -hmm. we'll I think we'll have some really interesting things to share yeah. in this meeting. Um, so we also had, we had, um, Joanne and I thought about, we, we put down newsletter thoughts, mostly to say we'd like to, um, we're, we're suggesting that perhaps at a future meeting we might um, brainstorm how newsletter thoughts, what, what we might do. Um, um, about our newsletter. Right. Uh, this is 
This is Joanne. Um, I, I had a very nice conversation with Nancy Spittal, who's the head of the COA in Wendell. And she said they, uh, they sent a newsletter out to all their folks that included a postcard, a return postcard. And the return postcard asked, was asking them if they would prefer to receive a paper newsletter or an email newsletter. Uh, but it also captured their email information. Um, and so, which is one of the things we talked about not having and in spite of the fact that Janice did that very nice little cute alley thing for the um, our town, we we never got a response from that. We got one. One. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, I think that be, you know, anticipating moving ahead in the future with a survey or questions for people, that might be something that we'd want to consider doing since. Uh, we do have more money this year perhaps than we will in the future because of our holdover from last year we we can afford to do a paper mailing um just something to think about i don't think we need to decide that now but um, right. i'm just putting it out there as an idea and it, it would have to be printed um the a postcard would have to be printed uh, and we would have to see what we would want to, you know, what kind of information we would want to capture on it. Um, and it would cost mailing. Yes. And so that's why we, we thought we, thank you, Joanne, that Joanne would, would um, remember what exactly we were <laughs> proposing that we would, you know, just offer it for folks to think about and then we'd come back and talk mm -hmm. more in depth at our next meeting. And it does remind me of, um, I, I'm grateful that we came to the conclusion that we did relative to fitness class funding because, um, you know, we we may have to outsource the the um, our, if we do a mailing we may need to outsource the whole thing and um, that will cost us some money. Mm -hmm. This is Janice just reminding us that. A couple of meetings ago, someone, and I, it might have been Susan Milliger, I may be wrong, it might have been Joanne, was going to check in with Sally. About I what did. Going to continue. You did? Okay. I did. I missed that. I'm sorry. Well, I was to tell Joanne. I don't know if I was to tell the group, but she's, ah. or nobody asked me. She, um, yes, she's willing to continue. Okay, thank you. I didn't know that. Mm. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so think about it. Um, we, we're, our current issue of our town newsletter is being totally outsourced. So we'll have a good sense about how that works um, mm -hmm. and, um, this time. And, and um, I've been immersed in the process. So I, I'll, I'll know. Um, I'm, mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. Um, one other detail that we do need to talk about is the date for our November meeting. Um, the second Wednesday in November is Veterans Day. Oh. Um, so um, usually oh. town meetings are not held on, on uh, state holidays. So mm -hmm. um, if we want to, uh, I just want to bring that before we, before we get close and, and I, and <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. All the days of the week are pretty much the same at this point, I think, for a lot of us. <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> yeah, so we could, we could, um, the third Wednesday is the 18th. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I thought you were, this is Janice. I thought possibly you were talking about a Tuesday meetings. Oh, that's the oh. next board or I don't know. Never mind. Um, yeah, I yeah, I, <laughs> I know. Who knows? Um, uh, the select board is meeting on Thursday this week. So um, mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, thoughts? Anybody? Um, I I think Linda, you're you're more in touch with when other people are meeting because if the zoom meetings overlap is a problem um, maybe you could find out 
uh, a time which would not be controversial? We, we don't really know. I mean, the only one we, the Board of Health meets regular, you know, they regularly meet on Wednesday evenings. However, they have their own um, meeting platform. They use a different one. They don't use Zoom. Okay. Mm -hmm. so they're good. It just so ZBA meets randomly uh, on days when it, it meets when it when it works with all of their <laughs> schedules. So and it's they're case driven, so you never know when they're going to meet. And I think we're safe because we start at five thirty, and we know we mm -hmm. can start at five fifteen if we you know if we need to, and mm -hmm. um, it, you know uh, make it w that we will be okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So shall we shall we go for the third Wednesday, November eighteenth? Janice, I were yes or fine with me. <laughs> yeah. Susan Gomberg, fine with me. Okay, Susan M, fine with me. Okay. <coughs> All right. So we're good for the eighteenth. Um, and um, one other sort of unanticipated topic, um is that it's time to write our annual Shrewsbury annual report, not to be confused with the Executive Office <laughs> of Elder Affairs um, annual report. And um, Janice and I were talking and I know that she's... Uh, well, uh, I can elaborate quickly. When I saw the agenda and I saw annual report update, I didn't link it to EO a grant slash and I mm -hmm. thought oh my god I'm supposed to report on what I'm doing on the annual report <laughs> and so I started going through the minutes which is why I remembered that the age friendly thing was the night before our meeting in oh. December because I'm reading all these minutes and taking notes so I'm up through January so I'm okay. gathering the information good for you thank you so much it was so really panic. Thank you. <laughs> no panic and thank mm -hmm. you yeah sure. That's so great. Mm -hmm. And and I looked at the uh, at the Council on Aging website today. And Janice, I just want to thank you again for your work on that because it's much more clear than it was before. So thank you. Well, thank yeah. you. Welcome. Yeah. yeah. We still need to make a, a little boxy thing uh, with links to stuff we talked about, but I haven't had a chance. I've been <laughs> with the town newsletter, so and other stuff. Susan Gomberg, did you have something? Uh, no, I was just telling, just was chiming in with a thank you to Janice for mm -hmm. working on the report. Um, well, we are, we are. We are ahead of the game. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so let's just recap the things that we've tabled. Okay. Good idea. <laughs> good idea. Okay. Um, uh, let's okay, see. So Susan, Susan Gomberg is going to um, write a draft response to the footits and run it. We'll, we'll get that. She'll run it, send it to me and we'll get that out. Um, yeah. And um, as far as statistics go for the grant, um, for ongoing, Marianne mm -hmm. and Joanne are gonna work on something from, for FY21. Right. And I'm going to get you the breakdown of um, the, not people um, 75 and older and it's 60 to 75 but if you still want that th those are those are the people that we served it's not um you don't people need the in the total, you don't need the total number then no they okay. don't ask for it they, they they did last time but they don't okay. this time. all right all right i'll take that off my list okay yeah. and then we're, we tabled um considering an annual contribution contribution to village neighbors mm-hmm and we tabled um, the uh, report from Susan Millinger about the age-friendly communities workshop that she attended. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, continuing, we uh, want to spend some more time, some 
time talking about newsletter. So, okay. All yeah. right. And then we'll also have an annual F Town of Shootsbury annual report. Um, you know, a, a, a draft whenever Janice is ready. No, no pressure on that. So, but that will be forthcoming at some point. Okay. Okay. So, if we're all set, uh, I move that we adjourn at uh, six thirty-five p.m. Right. <laughs> so moved. Uh, roll. Everybody good with that? We need a second. Uh, yeah. Janice will second. Okay. All right. Roll call vote. Joanne Bernhard. Aye. Susan Millinger. Aye. Susan Gomberg. Aye. And Janice Gray. Aye. And Linda Avis got aye. Okay. We did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Thank you, everybody. That was a lot. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good Thank night. you. Bye, Good night, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a nice Bye. evening. Bye. Bye.